Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Tolu, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about why some women experience milky discharge from their nipples when they are neither pregnant nor breastfeeding. It promises to be an interesting video, so if you like what I have to say, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment for me letting me know how useful you found this video. All right, guys, let's begin. When a woman's breasts produce milk, this is known as lactation. Lactation is normal in women who are either pregnant or breastfeeding. However, when women, especially young women, experience this milk production from their breasts when they are neither pregnant nor breastfeeding, then this can be a cause for concern. In this case, this milk production is known as hyperlactation or more commonly known as galactoria. One in four women at some point in their life experience galactoria. Now, while galactoria itself may not be a serious problem, sometimes it can be the symptom of an underlying problem. And in many cases, it may actually affect the fertility levels of the women experiencing galactoria. So for these reasons, it's very important for galactoria to be treated. So now let's talk about the possible causes of galactoria. Galactoria more often than not occurs because of an increase in a particular hormone in the body called prolactin. Prolactin is a hormone that is produced by a small gland located at the base of our brain called the pituitary gland. So galactoria usually arises when the levels of prolactin are higher than normal. By the way, it's important for me to mention that galactoria does not affect only women. It can affect men as well and even babies. The most common cause of galactoria is when the affected individual has a non-cancerous tumor that affects the pituitary gland. Remember, the pituitary gland is the small gland at the base of the brain that is responsible for producing prolactin. So when the affected individual has a non-cancerous tumor affecting this pituitary gland, it can lead to the pituitary gland producing higher than normal levels of prolactin. Other causes of galactoria include hormone imbalance, some medications, for instance, some antidepressants or birth control pills, or even some antihypertensives can cause galactoria. Some medical conditions can also cause galactoria, medical conditions like chronic kidney disease, or even in some cases, hypothyroidism, and in some people, stress as well. We should also bear in mind that excessive stimulation of the breasts and or nipples can lead to this milky discharge from the nipples. I would also like to mention that in some women, after tests have been done extensively, we may not be able to find the cause of the galactoria. In those cases, it's known as idiopathic galactoria. Now, it's not usually a cause for concern because even though we may not be able to find the cause, being able to rule out other more serious possibilities, knowing that, okay, those are not the things causing it, can help us to know exactly how to treat this idiopathic galactoria, even though we've not been able to pinpoint an exact cause. Now, the core symptom of galactoria is when the person, usually a young lady, notices that her nipples are producing a milk-like discharge. However, there are other symptoms of galactoria. Some of these possible symptoms include irregular periods, vaginal dryness, and when it affects men, it may even lead to erectile dysfunction. In some women, they may suddenly notice that they are having new chin or chest hair. Another symptom that is not commonly known is that when the cause of galactoria is maybe due to that non-cancerous tumor of the pituitary gland, apart from the milky discharge, the affected individual may also experience headaches and sometimes blurry vision. So guys, let's now talk about the treatment of galactoria. Galactoria is very treatable, which is good news for everybody listening, even in cases that are caused by this tumor of the pituitary gland. But it's very important for you to work with your healthcare provider on this. 
Now, when you go see your healthcare provider, most likely he or she would ask you questions regarding maybe the types of medication you are taking, regarding your medical history to try to see if you have any medical conditions that may cause the galactoria. Your healthcare provider will also most likely examine your breasts and your nipples, most likely examine the nature of the milky discharge from your nipples at the point of assessment. They may also decide to run some tests that may help them to understand exactly what's going on. Tests like checking your prolactin levels, checking your thyroid function. They may also want to do maybe a mammogram or an ultrasound scan of your breasts. A pregnancy test could also be very important, especially in young women who are sexually active. And in some cases, they may even go as far as doing scans to check your pituitary gland to make sure that there is no tumor there. The treatment for galactoria depends on the underlying cause and that's why many young ladies that experience it they notice that when they use some medication like maybe bromocryptin or cabagulin it may lead to a reduction or a cessation of symptoms for a while and then these symptoms may then come back again this usually is because the underlying problem was not treated instead the symptom, which is the milk discharge, is what was being treated. So possible forms of treatment can range from maybe lifestyle modifications, like for instance, learning to stop overstimulating your breast and nipples, or maybe stopping or adjusting medications that might be causing the galactoria. Also, medications like bromocryptin and cabagulin, which I mentioned earlier, can be helpful in reducing prolactin levels. If the galactoria is due to a tumor of the pituitary gland and this tumor is not causing any other symptoms or complications, your healthcare provider might deem it more helpful to just watch it without doing anything to actively treat it. However, if the tumor does need treatment, there are ways to treat it. There are medications that can be given which can help to shrink the tumor. And in some rare cases, you may require, say, surgery or radiation therapy to remove or to shrink the tumor. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. And if you're a true fan of mine and you've watched this video to the end, please leave a comment for me saying thank you, Dr. Tolu, so that that way I know who my true people are on this video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye.